find the probability of rolling doubles on two six-sided dice. So these are just the regular types of dice that you're used to playing with on with Monopoly or any kind of typical board game, numbered from one to six. So rolling doubles. So doubles would be getting maybe two ones, or maybe getting two threes, getting the same number showing up on the top of both of the dice. So that's what we would need to figure out the probability of. So to do that, let's think about all of the possible outcomes. Let's think about the sample space right over here. So let's say we have the first die. First die, I'll do in this column. So here are the outcomes for the first die. You can have a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, or a 6. And then let's say for the second die, so the second die, I'll do in this right over here. I'll have the columns labeled the roll on the second die. You could get a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, or a 6. So for example, I could get a 1 with the first die and a 1 with the second die. And actually, that meets our constraints, but we won't go there just yet. So this is one member of our sample space, getting a 1 in the, this first die and a 1 on the second die. And I want to be clear, these are independent events. The second die does not know what happened for the other die and vice versa. They're just going to each roll independently of each other. So these are independent events. They don't affect each other. And so all of these are all the situations where I roll 1 on the first die. These are all situations where I roll 1 on the first die. And then the second die, I could get a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, or a 6. And let me put commas here. So this is, that's not 11. So that's 1 and a 2, 1 and a 3, 1 and a 4, 1 and a 5, 1 and a 6. And so these are all situations where I roll a 2 on the first die. A 2 on the first die. We're going to fully build out our sample space. And then these are all the situations. So this is a 2 and a 1, a 2 and a 2, 3. Four, five, six. I could keep filling it that way. Or I could say, hey, these are all the scenarios where I roll a 1 on the second die. So I'd have a 1 over here, 1 over here, 1 over here, 1 over here. These are all the situations where I have a 2 on the second die. These are all situations where I have a 3 on the second die, a 4 on the second die, a 5 on the second die, and a 6 on the second die. And then here are all situations where I have a 3 on the first die. 3, 3, 3, 3, and 3. Almost done. These are situations with a 4 on the first die. 4. So this is rolling a 4 and a 4. This is rolling a 4 and a 5. 4 and a 6. These are 5 on the first die. 5. Almost there. One row left. And these are rolling a 6 on the first die. 6 on the first die. So each of these, each of these, I guess you can view them as cells. Let me draw it as an actual grid, as a chart. So let me split it up to make it a little bit neater. Hopefully it makes it a little bit neater. So let me draw some lines here. Then let me draw these to make it, you see it's a grid. So on this chart, each of these cells, each of the little boxes show a possible outcome. They show a possible outcome. They are a member of our sample space. They are a member of our sample space. Let me just draw a couple of more lines, and then we're ready to think about this a little bit more. So each of these grids, this not so neatly drawn grid, and each, each of these represent an outcome when I roll two die. Three on the first die, three on the second die. Five on the first die, three on the second die. Four on the first die, five on the second die. These are all the possibilities. And you see there's 36 of them, because there's six different possibilities for the first die, and six different possibilities for the second die. Six times six is 36. Now, how many of these possibilities, how many of these outcomes, how many of these simple events meet the, constra the constraints for our compound event? And a compound event is just an event that has more than one possible uh, outcome that satisfies it. So we want to roll doubles. So how many ways can we roll doubles? Well, that's doubles right there. 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 And that's doubles right there. That's why we call it a compound event. Rolling doubles is a compound event. Let me write this. This is a compound event. Compound event. Fancy word for just saying there's more than one outcome that meets that w w that we could say this event has happened. A simple event would be an event that's associated with only one outcome. This event is associated with multiple outcomes. So if you want to figure out the probability of rolling doubles, the probability of, and our event here is rolling doubles, rolling doubles, which is a compound event, 
rolling doubles. It has more than one event associated with it. Is say, well, how many events are how many sim it has more than one outcome associated with it? More than one simple event associated with it. This is a compound event. How many of the possible outcomes are associated with this event? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six, six outcomes associated associated with this event. With this event. And then how many total possible outcomes are there? Well, we already said there's a total of 36 possible outcomes. 36 possible possible outcomes. The size of the sample space is 36. So the probability of rolling doubles is six. There's six different ways I can roll double out of a possible 36 different ways of actually rolling the die. So it's 636, and we can simplify that because it's just a fraction. 6 over 36, they're both divisible by 6. So you can divide the numerator and the denominator by 6. That's the same thing as 1 over 6. 1 out of 6. So another way of thinking about it, I have a 1 6 chance when I roll two die of coming up with doubles. Uh, or 1 6 of all of the possibilities of rolling two die, 1 6 of them result in actually getting doubles.